McDonald's presents Holiday Huggable Muppet Babies. What up, Kermie? Love them, hug them, Muppet Babies hug them. Right now, get your kids Baby Kermit, Baby Fozzie, or Baby Piggy. They're soft and huggable for a special price with any McDonald's food purchase. Muppet Babies at our place, you can love them, hug them. Good night, Baby Piggy. At McDonald's. A portion of the proceeds of each Muppet Baby plush toy will be donated to Ronald McDonald Children's Charities. Something magic is about to happen. Yes, <laughs> Disney magic in the Pots and Pans Band. And Storm, huh? Kettle, skillet, pots and pans, stirring up magical meals. Their music. <laughs> Chimes, banjos, and tambourines stirring up music and young imaginations. Introducing the Disney Pots and Pans Band from Mattel, bringing imaginations to life. Bravo! What do we mean when we say the new Nissan 240SX is uniquely designed to provide excellent cornering? The Nissan 240SX. It's a lot of sports car, but you can handle it. This is going to be a great bulletin board all about the seasons. Does anybody have a favorite season? Summer, because you can go swimming. Winter, because you can build giant snowmen. Molly, do you have a favorite season? Oregano. <laughs> hey, you guys did a really good job. You made your own paste out of flour and water. I love this paste. <laughs> Sure is sticky, isn't it? And delicious. <laughs> Greetings, parental units. How was school? Oh, fabulous. Principal Muskie's finally gone off the deep end. Get this, we're supposed to cut school. Call me crazy, but I think there's something you're not telling us. Dad, there are loads of things I'm not telling you. What? Okay, okay, okay. See, there's a student internship program, which means that for six weeks, we ditch our last three classes and go to a job. Ah, just like real life. <laughs> When it's over, we write a term paper on what we learned. I myself don't plan to learn very much, so it'll be a very short paper. <laughs> so you guys are going to start pounding the pavement, huh? Well, my dad already got me a job at his uh, buddy's frozen yogurt shop. Great. Can we come by for some free samples? For you, anytime. I'm in yogurt now, but I won't forget the little people. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Later, Steve. So, Ross, what kind of a job are you going to look for? Whatever I'm good at. Do you remember when I gave you the Cooter preference test? It said you were completely devoid of ambition, marketable talents, and even the most fundamental social skills. So I'll be a high school principal. <laughs> well, until Principal Muskie throws in the towel, do you have any other ideas? Actually, I've given this a lot of thought, and uh, I'm gonna work here. I said I'm gonna work here. <laughs> I think you should look for your own job. It's a valuable part of the experience. No, Mom, it's the hard part of the experience. <laughs> Ross, read my lips. We're not hiring. Oh, I get it. Your firstborn son, your only son, displays a, a glimmer of interest in the family business, and you, you slap him away like so much... Well, something you slap away. <laughs> Ross, I suggest that you put on some nicer clothes, go down to the mall, and look for work. A job is not going to come walking through that door. Hi, guys. Do you mind if I have my pasta salad over here today? Sure, go ahead. Could you make me some? <laughs> Actually, Eileen, I'm sort of running a preschool right now. I'm sorry, Kate. I'm sorry. I had to miss lunch today. I've been so crazed lately. I've got all this work piling up at the office. I'm way behind on my expense reports. Whew, I really could use some help. Dad, this is the perfect opportunity for me. Make her give me a job. Ball's in your court, Ross. Sell yourself. <laughs> Eileen, I have to do a student internship for six weeks, and it'd really mean a lot if you hired me. Hmm. No one else has a student intern. This would make me look very important. <laughs> 
almost regal. So I get the job? Not yet. First, a little test to see if you've got what it takes to work for Miss Eileen J. Swift. Fire away. Okay, here's the situation. I'm taking a three-hour lunch. You know and I know there's a hat sale at Saks. My boss asks you where I am. What do you say? At your uncle's funeral. Good. Show some thought. Well, thank you. <laughs> Don't be cocky. It gets much harder. <laughs> I send you to a rival company's headquarters to steal some very sensitive documents. A security guard catches you in the act. What do you say? Hello, I'm the cleaning woman. Let's move up to the lightning round. I have been indicted for stock manipulation. You are on the witness stand. The prosecutor starts asking you questions that could put me away for the rest of my natural life. What do you do? Pass out. Mother, now, believe me, it's not that I don't find it fascinating who died in your building. It's... Wait a minute, how did you get this number? <laughs> I've got to go. You're late. Hey, Eileen, better late than never. Hey, Ross, let's get something straight. You work for me. You do not call me Hey, Eileen. You call me Miss Swift. Wow, you take this work stuff pretty seriously. <laughs> Very seriously. Look at the way you're dressed. <laughs> cool, huh? <laughs> if you want to work here, you better get yourself a suit. Eileen, who's this dude? My boyfriend. You don't have a boyfriend. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, Ben, Ben, did you process that confirmation ticket? What do you mean you never got it? Oh, oh, all right, all right, all right. I'll, I'll go down there myself. I'll be back in a minute. Stay out of trouble. And stay out of my desk. starting today and I said, Eileen, I gotta see this with my own eyes. <laughs> I'm sorry, have we met? Oh. You don't remember me, do you? I'm Leon, Leon Bidwell. I work side by side with your father. Tell you what romper will on us. <laughs> oh, sure, Mr. Bidwell. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> quack, quack. Quack, quack. Huh? Remember, does this love this? Used to call it quacky, quacky. Do quacky, quacky, we are. Do quacky, quacky. Oh. It's as enjoyable today as it was then. <laughs> oh, remember we used to call you? Little Goofy. Huh? Hi, Eileen. Hi, Leon. Uh, if you could excuse us, Ross and I have a lot of work to do. What a mind trip! Little Goofy. <laughs> well, the last time I saw you, but you were in diapers. Look at you. Here you are. I could just burst. I hope you'll give me some warning. Ross, take these papers down the hall and shred them. All of them? Yes, all of them. Go, go, go. Time is money. Uh, but Eileen, this thing on top here, it says confirmation ticket. Isn't that what you've been looking for? <gasps> oh, this is exactly what I've been looking for. Ross, you have saved my life. Well, yeah, looks like little Goofy pulled your chestnuts out of the fire. <laughs> Pretty sharp move, Ross. I think you've got real potential. I do? Hmm. Yeah, sure. You're going to fit in great. I will? Hmm. Stick with your Uncle Leon, kiddo, in a couple of weeks. You'll be just like me. Quacky, quacky. <laughs> Whoa, looks like Ross is putting in another long day. Eileen must really be cracking the whip. <laughs> well, you know how hard she works. You've seen that plaque over her desk? Sleep is for sissies. <laughs> Gotta admit it. 
I'm proud of the kid. Yeah, so am I. Eileen says he's doing great. Yeah, well, what's more important is he's happy, you know, and why shouldn't he be? For the first time in his life, he's really stuck to something. Yeah, for two whole days. <laughs> That's our boy. Good afternoon, Frau Harper. Herr Harper. <laughs> hey, Steve, how's the world of yogurt treating you? No, World of Yogurt is our competitor. I'm interning at Lotta Yogurt. You've probably seen our ad on TV. We have a great slogan. Where sprinkles are free. <laughs> Catchy. Ladies and gentlemen, and that boy with the swirl on his head. <clears throat> it is uh, my privilege to present to you the best-dressed student intern in the capitalist world, Mr. Ross Harper. I just thought that somebody in Mr. Harper's position should have an Armani suit. Brian, get the camera. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> no, 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 wait, wait, Kate. You haven't even heard the best part. Go ahead, Ross, say it. Oh, no, Eileen, I can't. That's just between you and me. It's office humor. He has office humor. <laughs> it's the big stockholders meeting, and he's Michael Douglas. Greed is good. <laughs> <laughs> this is wild. I mean, just the thought of you in my own surroundings. Oh, tell me, did you see Leon? Oh, yeah, he, he's a great guy. Really? I always thought he was a jackass. <laughs> so how was your day? Oh, it was great. I did some filing, distributed some memos, and I made Eileen a cheese omelet. Ross, a couple of days ago, you were a greenhorn, a slug, the lowest form of life. And now look at you. You're an incredible nerd. <laughs> he's just jealous. Well, this calls for a celebration. Eileen, do you have any plans for dinner? No, whatever you want to make is fine. Dinner will be on the table in ten minutes, Mr. E.F. Hutton. <laughs> nice studs, Ross. I'd say I get the last laugh considering I'm dressed like an adult and you're dressed like a dairy product. <laughs> oh, really, Mr. Stockbroker? So you're the head of the office, huh? Gonna get a beeper next? Suspenders? A toupee? Shut up, Stiv! What'd I say? Just shut up! Yeah, we're just giving you a hard time. That's what you love about me. I just don't want to talk about my job, okay? What's wrong? Everyone says you're doing great. I've got to quit. When you get a head cold, your head's in a fog. You sneeze, your nose runs. You get all stuffed up, you can't breathe. That's why there's Actifed, the head cold medicine, with an antihistamine to help stop your runny nose and sneezing, and the nasal decongestion most recommended by doctors to help clear up your stuffy head. So when a head cold comes over you, get Actifed. It lifts the fog of a head cold. It's a jungle out there. You can survive with the new four-door Mitsubishi Montero. Its V6-powered tame snarling beasts. It takes you away to a more civilized world. The new four-door Montero. Suddenly the obvious choice. Both my parents came from Sicily. And while my mother made very good sauce, your Classico de Sicilia with ripe olives and mushrooms has a pretty big edge over hers. Classico de Sicilia. Authentic regional pasta sauce. The press calls it the most controversial miniseries of the year. Oh my God, is it true? The critics call it one of the best things you'll see on TV. Haven't you read the papers? It's the show some people don't want you to see. I am not quite ready to let television shape the government of this country. The show all America will talk about tomorrow. See it next. Favorite son. On night court. Run, the race is on and Dan's the man. Will he get licked at the ballot box? No woman beats Dan Fielding. Not unless he asks her to. Then he could say career woman J.C. Wyatt has it all. Now she has a whole lot more. Mommy. Kate Jackson stars in Baby Boom on an all-new Wednesday. 
I don't get it, Ross. Where's the job stress? I mean, now you want a stressful job? Try the yogurt field. What are you talking about? We sell low-fat yogurt. So guess who our customers are? I don't know. Women. That sounds great. Big women. <laughs> Big hungry women. <laughs> On diets. <laughs> they haven't eaten all day. They come into our store, they want yogurt, and they want it bad. <laughs> Oh, well, believe me, it's not as rough as what I've got to deal with. You, what do you have to complain about? Everyone's so nice to you. They're too nice to me, Steve. You can't believe the stuff they say to me. You, you've got so much potential. You're so smart. Your omelets are so light and fluffy. <laughs> well, they are. I just can't stand the pressure, Steve. I mean, I'm doing great now, but what if I slip up? I'm not as great as everybody thinks I am. I'm a fraud. This is news? <laughs> Harper, old boy, you are a whiz at filing. What do you call that system of yours again? Uh, alphabetical order. <laughs> you sure are smarter than those 19 ex-secretaries of mine. What a bunch of losers. Like the one who kept stealing phone numbers out of my address book. How'd you catch her? I went through her purse. <laughs> Look, Eileen, the week's over, and it's been a good week. But I need to talk to you about something pretty important. And I need to talk to you about something pretty dang important, Mr. How'd you like a part-time job? No, no, no. You see, I tried to talk to my parents, but they wouldn't listen. And so I thought that you... Betty, my... Betty, could you come in here for a second? For he's a jolly good student intern. For he's a jolly good student intern. For he's a jolly good student intern. Which nobody can deny. Congratulations on your first full week. All I did was shred and file. And you did it like a true Harper. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, Eileen, I really need to talk to you alone, please. It's your nickel. Dad! <laughs> Do you think I would forgive myself if I missed your party? Dad, it's no big deal. It's a big deal to me. You tried something new and you're great at it. Look who's here. <laughs> Leon! Yeah! <laughs> Good to see ya! Eileen? Oops, uh, Bri, number one son wants me in conference. Oh, don't let me get in the way of big business. It's not really business, I just... <gasps> but this is! Oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, <laughs> don't, don't give me presents, I don't want presents. Gosh, uh, it's a token of their appreciation. Yeah. Aren't you gonna open it? Yeah. Open oh, it! Oh, it's it's me, I'll open it, I'll open it. Oh, looky here, a Ooh. Rolex watch! A Rolex? Well, it's not a real Rolex, but you're not a real stockbroker. <laughs> speech! Speech! Oh, yes! Speech! Speech! speech. Yes. speech. Yes. Come on, Ross, give him a speech. Well, uh, I'd like to thank Eileen. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, and Leon. Wanky, quanky. <laughs> and, uh... Especially my dad for being so understanding. Oh, that's so sweet. So sweet. Everyone here has been so nice to me and so friendly. Yeah. Oh, wow. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Which is why it's, it's so rough standing up here now, because it, it's been a great week and now, well, I quit. <laughs> What? <laughs> this quitting business, it's a ploy. It's the oldest negotiating tactic in the book, am I right? You want to raise. No, I don't. <gasps> Five bucks an hour, not a penny more, you little bandit, you. Eileen, <laughs> I don't want to work here anymore. I quit. <laughs> You're serious? But you've got five more weeks. Look, I tried to tell you. I just don't want to let everybody down. I, I just can't do this anymore. I'm sorry. Kids today, you give them a Rolex and an Armani and they treat you like dirt. Where are their values? Eileen, it wasn't a real Rolex. Well, it wasn't a real Armani either. <laughs> but the point is, he didn't know that. How could you two let this happen? Eileen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know, 
I shouldn't take this out on you. I'll go home and call my mother. <laughs> She's still up at this time of night? Oh, yeah, I've got her on hold. Nighty-night. Good night. Is Ross still up in his room? He just closed his door and put on his stereo. He hasn't even come down for food. Why did he quit today? He seemed so happy all week. Well, we were happy all week. I guess that was the problem. Ross can't stand seeing us happy? <laughs> we were so thrilled about everything, we never noticed what he was really going through. <clears throat> did Eileen leave? I wanted to give her back the suit. She left a little while ago. Does she hate me? Eileen? Of course not. She did just seem a little bit hurt. Was your boss hurt when you quit? Oh, he was hurt. He sued him. <laughs> Do you guys hate me? Oh, what kind of a question is that? But I quit. He didn't quit the family. We're just concerned. Ross, if you were unhappy in your job, I wish you would have come and told us. I'm sorry. I, I wanted to tell you. I just didn't have the nerve. It's been a hard week for me. You didn't like working at the office? Too many adults? Well, they are an acquired taste. <laughs> and I was surrounded by them all week. Stockbrokers, secretaries, and a man who thinks he's a duck. You should meet his wife. <laughs> but I was at the party today. They were really, really nice to you. I, I worked there for 15 years and never got a watch. Just a subpoena. <laughs> I know they were nice to me, and the nicer they were, the scarier it got. I mean, for the first time in my life, I was actually good at something, and people kept telling me. Well, you would have preferred being a disaster? Well, I certainly have more experience in that area. I mean, at this house, at school with my friends, I'm the invisible man. I don't do great things. I don't attract a lot of attention. I don't show up on the radar screen. And that's very comfortable. Don't say that, Ross. You're very popular. But no one expects much from me. No one depends on me. Until this week. I mean, you guys, Eileen, everybody at the office. Everybody kept on saying such nice things about me. I felt like I was at the Country Music Awards. <laughs> I just felt a lot of pressure. And I didn't want to make any mistakes and let everybody down. So I just ran away. We all feel like running away from things at one time or another. Not you guys, you're unshakable. Ross, did I ever tell you about the year I made All-State in football? Hundreds of times, Dad. <laughs> but did I tell you that the year after that I played so badly that I was benched? You were? That's great! <laughs> Glad this is cheering you up, Ross. <laughs> no, no, I, I mean, I, I always thought you were successful at everything and that I was some kind of genetic fluke. <laughs> Trust me, Ross, you're not. You know why I got benched that second year? After being all state, I was so scared of doing anything wrong, I wound up playing like a girl. Brian. A figure speech. <laughs> it makes me feel better to know that you were scared, too. All we're saying is that you, you can't be so afraid of failure that you sabotage your own success. Mom, you're a regular fortune cookie. <laughs> <gasps> I try. Dan, do you think Eileen would take me back? It's worth a shot, Ross. You feel like going back? I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, I feel okay now, but what if I get to the office and, and I feel like a fraud and, and a failure and a loser? Go visit Leon. <laughs> I'm ready. It's magic for your skin. It's Johnson's Baby Oil Mousse. Never greasy. So light, it just vanishes. Johnson's Baby Oil Mousse from Johnson & Johnson. Like magic for your skin. <laughs> Mommy, what? Nights like these are when you rely on children's Tylenol to bring her fever down fast. And mornings like these are why children's Tylenol is the one most pediatricians give their own children. Mommy, we both feel better now. I eat a cereal with nothing in the middle when there's oh, 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 so much. Honey and graham and lots of good things. Oh, 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 so much. Oh, yeah. In the middle of oh, 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 
Charles Quaker Oats. Suddenly, there's a whole new development in sports sedan so superior it was voted Japan's car of the year. Introducing the 1989 Galant from Mitsubishi. Suddenly, the obvious choice. What's so special about Wendy's new bacon Swiss burger? Bacon. Special sauce. Swiss cheese. More bacon. All on a toasted Kaiser bun. It's the only bacon Swiss burger with three strips of bacon. Ooh, doesn't that sound delicious? Wendy's new bacon Swiss burger. Come on in now and grab one while they're hot. Wake up all the teachers, time to teach a new way. Maybe then they'll listen to what you have to say. The power of teaching. The power to wake up young minds. The power to wake up the world. Teachers have that power. Reach for the power. Teach. We're recruiting young teachers. Call 1-800-45-TEACH. Next, live the shocking secrets in Favorite Son, a miniseries premiere. The Atlanta Constitution says it grabs viewers and never lets up. Harry Hamlin and Crocodile Dundee's Linda Kozlowski head an all-star cast. And tomorrow night, Alf's so upset he may go back to Melmac. See how your favorite furball gets out of this mess on Alf. Sit, Ubu, sit. Good dog. Tuesday, when Dick and Ed present a bloopers battle of the sexes. Just about anything could happen. And the winner is... The actor or actress who slips the most on the soaps. See Kramer vs. Dwyer, Ali takes up dancing. And from Miami Vice... Philip, I'm getting you for this one. It's the battle for the sex that bloops the best. Nothing artificial here. An all-new collection of the funniest bloopers ever. Tuesday. <laughs>